Welcome to Taking Control of Your Financial Life podcast, providing the simple answers to the complex questions asked about your financial future. Let's get you the answers you need about retirement, investing, asset planning, and the current market. Here's your host, Julian Rubenstein. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Taking Control of Your Financial Life. My name is Julian Rubenstein, and I'm the host of this podcast. I'm also the president of American Asset Management, a registered investment advisor located in Boca Raton. And we are very fortunate today to have Cindy Blumenfeld from Engineer Tax Services uh, as our guest. So please join me in giving a nice welcome to Cindy. How are you, Cindy? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. So Cindy, you have a very interesting career. So why don't we get right with it and tell us what you do? (laughs) Sounds great. Well, I love our company's tagline, Engineer Tax Services, where we marry the science of engineering with the principles of accounting. So it's a very nice niche. We do um, professionally, we're a professionally licensed engineering firm specializing in tax credit studies for tax deductions and tax credits uh, federally. So it's a very nice niche. So we work very closely with CPAs, architects, builders, owners. I like to think of us as my little analogy is that we're the anesthesiologists in the operating room. Like we're not your surgeon or your CPA. We don't file clients tax returns, but you don't want to go in without us. <laughs> we're an important part of that team. Okay. And what is your role? Business development. Okay. And I've been with the company oh, a little over 13, 14 years now. So, and so are you, you're calling on corporations, I guess, that do engineering work? You know, it's it's really vast because depending at the end of the day, depending on who's getting the tax incentives, if it's a commercial property owner, the tax incentives go tax incentives go to them. If it's a designer that works on government buildings, there's some tax incentives that go to them if somebody's uh, manufacturing. So it depends on the structure. We always have to look at everything in two phases. What are you buying, building, renovating, or creating? What are those tax incentives? And then at the end of the day, everyone's in a different tax position. So, you know, how's their utilization? What's your tax rate? How many partners do you have? How can you utilize these incentives to get the cash into your pocket? Right right now, I would assume the average accountant does not know any of this, which is why they come to you. (laughs) I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's It's a big specialty. It's definitely niche. Cost segregation studies have been around since the 80s so that they're not they're not new. A lot of CPAs will refer them as component depreciation. Basically, they're engineering appraisals of the building for tax purposes. If you don't have a cost segregation study done, your CPA will depreciate your investment property if it's commercial over 39 years. And if it's a residential investment like house, 27 and a half years, not including land. Land isn't appreciable. So that really doesn't give the owners a whole lot of benefit or really make any sense because none of the components in the building are lasting 30, 40 years. So by having this engineering breakdown, hundreds of pages long, every piece, part, and component, not only down to the nuts and bolts and the wiring, but what that wiring is too, that is the tool that the CPA needs to be able to accelerate because most CPAs don't have in-house engineers to do these studies. So that's where we come in, do the analysis and advise our clients, please review this with your tax advisors. When they say, yeah, that makes sense. (laughs) Uh, Typically it's a no brainer. I mean, we're able to capture just an elevator and estimate about 30 to 35% of the purchase price back year one in acceleration. So huge benefits. And then additional ancillary benefits if in the future, you know, when you own things, you're always putting more money into it. So any repairs, maintenance, renovations that somebody does to their building, they're able to go back to that report and highlight and update anything that's been removed. So they went and put in a new HVAC Highlight the old one, give it to your CPA. They can write off the old one because nobody's HVAC lasting 40 years. I see. Okay, very interesting. So how did you get into this career? It's an, very unusual. It is. Thank you for asking. It, it was an amazing segue. So I guess it starts with me being a mortgage broker, which was great until the implode of 08. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, now, now what am I going to do? So I was also 
doing some closings for a real estate attorney because I'm a notary and I understood all that paperwork. So I was helping do some outside closings. And I had a friend of mine who does commercial real estate, and he was telling me a little bit about cost segregation. And I found that so interesting. So I immediately went to my CPA and my real estate attorney, and they said it's 100 percent kosher. And I said, let me get this right. This company is saving clients hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, and nobody that I talk to knows about it. This is perfect for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so definitely spreading spreading the good news. Now, and how do you find clients? Well, best clients are previous clients, right? When you show them what you can do and they do their due diligence and then you get referrals. But- it's funny because what had happened was is um, another realtor had invited me. He had a ticket to go to an event in Orlando that was $2,000 a ticket and he couldn't go. And he said, Cindy, if you want, you can have my ticket. So this is the time I'm juggling the three things, mortgages, closings, trying to learn about cost segregation. And I said, sure, I would love that ticket. And I packed my suitcase and I went. I had no idea why I was going, what it was going to be, but I went. And now I'm sitting in the audience and the head honcho on stage said to the crowd and cost segregation, you people need to understand about cost segregation studies. And don't I have an expert in here? Where is she? So I half raised my hand and looked around because I wasn't. Next thing I know, I am on stage. And yes, you can YouTube it. (laughs) (laughs) And yes, I signed myself up for Toastmasters afterwards. (laughs) But it's been a great journey. That's fun. And then, That's fun. And then what's great fun. about um, engineered tax is we don't stop there. We look into other incentives, energy incentives, and as I mentioned briefly, disposition of assets and research and development for manufacturers. It's constantly evolving, which is really exciting to be able to share the good news. And it's all about putting the puzzle pieces together. You know, people know about maybe utility rebates and state incentives or a 30 percent tax credit. But a lot of this is just, you know, lack of awareness and certainly not throwing any CPAs under the bus. You can't be an expert in everything. This is so niche. And you're not going to go to a podiatrist for a cardiac issue. You need the team to be involved. And I'm blessed to be a part of a really great team. So our team consists of engineers, architects, CPAs, tax attorneys. So it's our blend of talent, bringing more tools to CPAs and owners and developers, architects. Got it. So you've been doing this for how long now? Oh, I think we're at 13 years. So what do you know now that you wish you knew when you first started? I love that question. Not to be afraid to speak. Okay. All right. (laughs) But it actually it actually worked out for me because when I when I first started, I was told uh, advised to target CPAs because CPA is at the end of the day, who's going to advise the client and us whether or not they can benefit. And somebody would only do a study with us if at the end of the day they're very significantly benefiting from the cost of having a study done. But I was afraid to speak to a CPA, (laughs) maybe share some light. So I went around and I spoke to a lot of lighting designers and HVAC contractors and developers talking about the energy incentives. And now that those have been expanded and made permanent and increased, that's been really great. So we're able to spread the word on a, a lot more to a lot more people in a greater way. Now, do, you, do you, is your firm charge a, a commission or is it a fee? So we always do a complimentary benefit analysis and we'll go really high level with that or we can go basic. If somebody tells me that I bought a building last year for a million dollars, this type of building, the address, I can get a complimentary analysis to them in two days. This is about what your tax incentives would be. This is what we can accelerate. And this is how much our fees are. Please review you know, with your CPA. And then when they decide it makes sense to go forward and get a study done, that's when we take a deposit and ask for everything we need, survey, 
um, if there's an appraisal on the property, if there were renovation costs. And the other way, you know, we work a lot with new construction, where we'll get, you know, full sets of plans and breakout and do the energy certification, depending on, you know, what we have and what the client provides, we'll dig in and get them everything we can on that property. It's very interesting, right? So you're giving them an incentive. This is how much we think we can save you. Then they have to get their accountant to bless it. And then it's off, it's off to the races. Exactly. And it really is a no brainer. I'll let you know when you wouldn't want to do a cost segregation study. If you've already had the building the 20 some odd years and not planning any major renovations, it's pretty much depreciated. It doesn't make any sense. If you're flipping properties, you're buying it this year, going to sell it next year, you will have a recapture. The rule of thumb is you want to hold it five years, although someone with a higher education level than me might say, but your capital gains tax rate is this and your capture tax rate is that. And I know there's also some additional benefits upon a sale of a property. So again, you know, it's pulling in the team of experts to review everyone's individual situation to see when it makes sense. But what's great is, you know, we can go back. A lot of people don't realize, and a lot of CPAs think that they're limited to a three-year look back and have to amend. And that's not the case. Um, We do a form 3115, which really should be called, and I changed my mind form. (laughs) You're telling the IRS, I don't want to depreciate this building over 27 or 39 years. I want to do it the right way to this engineering methodology. And we can go back and recapture missed depreciation. So we do a cost segregation study. If somebody bought the building yesterday, even if they bought it five years ago, 10 years ago, we can go back and recapture all that missed depreciation. And then there's bonus depreciation. Oh, wow. Now, do you have a lot of competition in this field? No. Really? <laughs> There are other providers, okay. <laughs> but I don't view them as competition. Um, we definitely are the leaders in the U.S. and we're also unique in the value add that we bring. For instance, we include DIRA reports, we call them. They're detailed engineered insurance replacement appraisals. Again, we don't sell insurance, but I tell my clients when we're done with the study, go back to your insurance broker, have them put them on the report on the underwriter's desk and have them do better by you because we have the true replacement costs. Um, Break it down. I've seen other providers studies where they'll have one line item of electrical at $30,000. Well, we'll have 30 pages of electrical broken down because depending on what that electrical goes to is how you can accelerate it. You have to think about your building like a dollhouse turn it upside down and shake it, everything that falls out needs to be properly identified and reclassified. Okay. So you're definitely more thorough than that. In your, you see, you give a much more thorough report than a competition. You take Absolutely. a much deeper dive. Yes. Okay. So uh, on a personal note, when it comes to business, like how do you define success for yourself? By my clients. Absolutely. I mean, I got an email last week. Hey, Cindy, thanks for saving me $2 million last year. Me and my friend, Bob. I can't tell you <laughs> me <in> my day. <laughs> right. I, that's a good one. So with all your success, what's your biggest challenge in business? You know, the more you know, the more you don't know. <laughs> so I'm not an engineer or a CPA, and that's the space that I'm in. So I am constantly learning, and they're they're changing everything so much. The um, IRA was released this year, the uh, um, Inflation Reduction Act. So with respect to energy consumption, and that circles back to my relationship with a lot of MEA, mechanical and electrical contractors and designers trying to get either the tax credits for themselves, for the design or for their clients. Again, putting the puzzle pieces together. If someone wants to sell a client new lighting, new HVAC, there's a utility rebate, there's a state incentive, we're going to loop in Cindy, there's 179D, there's disposition of the old lighting, maybe cost segregation, putting all of the puzzle pieces together. Got it. Well, it's a very interesting job. Uh, it must be rewarding, though, when you get when the end result is you're saving your client money, right? I mean, you're, you're not charging them anything. It's a great thing. You know, I look at it the same way. When we make our clients money, you feel good, right? And I always tell people I work for free. You just make a little less. And in your case, they save a little less, but you wouldn't have made it in the first place. 
Well, that's kind of like what I tell my clients at the, if loop me in at the end of the day, whatever you're selling them is free. Cause I'm going to save them so much money. Right. Absolutely. Um, well, is there anything else that we didn't talk about that you'd like to uh, share it with the audience? I know we took a pretty deep dive, but. We did. We took a nice dive into cost segregation and then the energy component that I mentioned, the 179D has been made permanent and that's for larger buildings, 20,000 square feet and up new construction and renovation that needs a third party engineering certification. That's where we come in. And 45L is a great, powerful tax credit for new construction, multifamily homes. So those are for larger developers that would benefit there. And anyone listening, if you use LinkedIn and you want to connect with me, we're really good about posting all of the updates. In fact, we're waiting on some further guidance from Treasury on this IRA within the next, hopefully, three to six months. Great. And if uh, for clients that do want to call you, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Email. That line, 954 439 Perfect. Okay. Well, I really want to thank you very much for joining us on the show and uh, maybe we'll have you back and we'll talk more about this. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Taking Control of Your Financial Life. For more information about today's topics, please visit or check the show notes for more important information and links. Share, rate, and review this show on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening.